during the first century and his missionary journey took him all throughout the Roman Empire. Paul started more than a dozen churches and he traditionally considered at least 13 books in the New Testament. Wrote more than 13 books in the New Testament, more than any other biblical writer. For this reason, St. Paul is often considered one of the most spiritual ministers that was in history. Amen. He had a greater impact on the world religious landscape than any other person besides Jesus. But before he was known as a tireless champion of Christianity, Paul was actually known as a persecutor yes. of the Christians. Yes. That means all of us have sinned and all of us have done some things and fell short of God's glory. Amen. Our subject today is Christ lives within my heart. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word today, God. We thank you for all that's been said and done in this house. We ask you now, God, to move me behind the cross, that they see nor heard none of me. God, we pray that all that is said today is through your Holy Spirit as he stands within me and preaches this word. God, I ask you to move everyone in this church behind the cross, that they see or hear none of themselves, that they may hear also Christ, who would preach the gospel to our lives, that God, we will hear the word and become doers of your word. For it's in Jesus' name, let us all together say amen. 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 <laughs> First two chapters, primary, personal nar nar narratives, excuse me. The apostle uh, rehearsed his own relationship to the gospel of Christ. His first emphasis, the sort of his gospel, was a direct relationship for the risen of Christ. Independent of other apostles or teachers, no high authority could be claimed. The second emphasis of this text today is the soundness of the gospel. It has been formally confirmed by other leaders or apostles without correction or addition. That is the net, the nutshell of our text today. Amen. When we look at the introduction of the text, the thesis of this lesson, Christianity is wonderful news about a Christ who came and died for our sins. He then arose from the dead triumphantly over death and the grave and brought to light the reality of eternal life and the gift of salvation. Second Timothy, the first chapter, verses eight through 10 says, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner. This is, this is Paul speaking uh, to Timothy. And Timothy wrote it. He said, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. That means he was in prison. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, a holy calling, yes. not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Amen. Watch this, y'all, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Yes. We are saved because of what Christ did for our lives before the world even took place. The 10th verse says, 
but it but it but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and morality to light through the gospel. Amen. Amen. Y'all heard that? Amen. So listen to what it says. He says, Jesus Christ abolished death. That means he, he conquered it, he destroyed it, yes. right? That's why he, he, he asked uh, a couple of weeks ago, don't worry about that, don't worry about that, stay focused. A couple of weeks ago, we was in Easter Sunday, yes. and Jesus, uh, Mary Magdalene came to the grave looking for Jesus. And the angel said, why do you look for the living among the dead? Amen. Jesus was trying to get her to understand I'm not dead, but yet I live again. Right. See, the only reason why we weep when folk die because those who weep, the Bible says, have no hope. Woo. But see, we don't supposed to weep because right. we supposed to realize that that's watch this, y'all ready? I don't know about some. I don't know about everybody. I'm talking about Porter. That's why I live. That's why I go to church. That's why I read my word. That's why I strive to do all I can for God because I'm getting ready. I'm not doing this for, for a paycheck. I'm not doing this that, that for popularity. I'm not doing this that folk like me or not like me. I'm not doing this to be the pastor and grow a mega ministry. The purpose of why I should and am doing and preaching the gospel because a day going to come that they're going to lay down this body and to be absent from my body means, guess what? Because I have hope to believe that when God said, Brother Rock, uh, Roscoe said this morning that Jesus said, I go away right. to prepare a place for you, Porter. And where I am, there shall you also be. In my father's house. Many mansions. Now listen to what I'm saying. Does that mean I won't miss my wife? Does that mean I won't miss my children? That means I won't miss my brothers and my sisters and my mother. And even you all as church members. Will I not miss? Yes. But see, he told us that to be absent from your body, that means to close your eyes for the last time. When you open them up again, you in glory. Yeah. Amen. And, and they even had people who write things on brochures or bulletins that would say, don't weep for me. That's right. See, if we knew what heaven was and what heaven looked like, okay, and if we had the faith to believe that Jesus says that I go away. Yes. To prepare a place for you. So he's telling you, for all of you that are laboring, all of you that have accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, <coughs> he's letting you know, I'm going away to do this for you. Yeah. See, if you're down here shucking and jiving, you're down here playing church, down here playing with folk, making your own abilities, out here doing everything, but not doing what the Word of God yeah. is instructing us to do. Yes. See? Every man got to stand on his own, whatever y'all call it, footstool. We all got to stand on our own, and we got to give an account for what we've done. Amen. That's why we shouldn't be upset with folk that they don't, they choose. Everybody got to, that's what's so beautiful about Christ. He told us, he said, choose ye this day whom you going to serve. Amen. See, see, y'all get the emphasis? Amen. He's not making you. No. He's not forcing you. You know, it seems like sometimes pastor is, but that's not God. God is not forcing you. He's saying, watch this. He's saying, I'm going away to prepare a place called heaven. That's right. And then he said, there is another place that's called eternal damnation, which is hell. Yes. He's telling you, while you yet have life, choose today. If you want to, if you want to live with me in paradise, I would love to have you. Amen. But if you want to choose to live and, and, and enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. If you want to go ahead on and think that what the earth and what the world has to offer you is greater than what God has to offer you, that's your choice. Yeah. Somebody's saying, well, Pastor, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if I can believe that. Good, I'm glad you said it. Because now I'm going to take you to Galatians, yeah. what I came to preach about. And then I'm going to take my seat. This is going to be very smooth, quick, and even to the end. We go on the first chapter of the book of Galatians. I want to introduce you to Paul and how he talks about Jesus. 
to the Galatians. For those who don't know, Galatia was a city. It was a place. The Galatians were people like African Americans, like Caucasians, like uh, Asia, uh, Asians. You know, they were a group of people. Same with Philippians. Same with in Rome, there were Romans. You know, in Corinthian, Korean, there were in Korean was Corinthians. These are God. Galatians. They lived in a place called Galatia. And these were Galatians. Amen. Paul has traveled to this place. Yes. And he's standing here in chapter 1. And he's introducing himself. And here's what he says. The same way I'm talking to y'all today. If I was Paul, I would say, I, John, I, Bishop Porter, mm -hmm. a servant of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Paul says... Paul, an apostle, he said, I'm not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God, the Father, who raised him from the dead. So what Paul is saying here to the Galatians, is saying what I'm saying to y'all, I stand here today as a man, but yet not I being a man. But I have been saved by the grace of God to proclaim the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He introduces himself to the Galatians by letting them know that I came here today from afar to preach God's word. Amen. Okay? He's trying to tell them, don't get caught up in me. Don't get caught up in what I say because I'm here as a servant sent by God to preach the gospel. Amen. He's not going to be hooping. He's not going to raise his voice. He's going to give them what thus saith the Lord. Paul goes on to say in verse 2, And all the brethren which are with me unto the church of Galatia. To the church of Galatia. He said unto all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that's in the church of True Heart Ministry. That's what he's saying. He, he's, he's basically introducing himself. That's what he's doing right now. He ain't started telling them about the goodness of the Lord. He's just introducing them who he is, and he's thanking these brothers and sisters for coming today. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times y'all get the, the bad end of the stick. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we do. The folk that's serving God, the folk that's coming to church on Sunday, and the pastor stand, and you get, they beat you up with the Bible because of the ones who ain't coming. Mm -hmm. But Paul says to them, he's saying, greetings to all of you that are here today, my brothers yes. and sisters in Christ. And then he goes on to say, watch what he say in verse 3. Grace be upon you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's telling them, after he introduced himself, he's saying grace be upon you. Amen. And I give you my peace that has been sent. He's saying the grace and the peace that I give to you was sent from God. That means God sent me here today to tell y'all grace and peace to y'all for those of you who got up this morning for those of you who thought it would be robbery to stay at home for those of you who have thought no I'm not going because of pastor I'm going to hear what God has to say and we thank God that he moved past out of the way because I want to hear from my Lord Amen. and so God is saying to you this morning grace and peace be unto you Amen. then he goes on to say in the fourth verse who gave himself. Listen, now he's talking about Jesus. He's telling you, he said, I'm telling you about grace and peace come from the Father. It came from heaven. I give that to you this morning. Now he's telling you, watch what he says. He's telling you who is giving you grace and peace today. He said, who, give, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Y'all get this? Amen. He's telling you, this is what God has brought us here today to say to us. This is what, he didn't bring us here to, to look at Pastor Porter's clothes and, and his nice, beautiful red tie. And He didn't bring us in here that we uh, have our moment. Amen. He brought you in here today to encourage you. Yeah. God brought you here today to because he wants you to know, I've seen your struggles. I see your pain. Yes. 
I see the struggles from week to week. I, I see what you're going through. I, I, I see sometimes you're being overlooked on your job. Sometimes you're being mistreated. Amen. Sometimes even when you have tried to do your best, I know evil. Hear what he said here? The, the present evil of this world. He's saying, I know the evil of the world yes. is present. Yes. And I know the devil wants you to give up. And I know the devil wants you to throw in the towel. Yes. And I know the devil wants you to just uh, announce or denounce Christ. Yes. But he's saying, watch this, who gave himself for our sins? He wants you to be introduced today to the Lord, our God, and Jesus, his son, who came and died and gave his life yes. for the sins of this world, our sins. Yes. Then he goes on to say in verse 5, to whom be glory forever and ever. Yes. He's telling you today that he wants you to glorify God. Yes. Forever, no matter what come, go, may, whatever's happened, whatever ain't going right in your life, whatever's good, whatever's bad, whatever's misunderstood, he's telling you to give God glory Amen. forever and ever. Don't, don't, don't count him short because God knows. He knows your, 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 your suffering and he has not brought you this far to leave you. We go over and we travel over. Uh, uh, I didn't want to stick to that. That was that was the first five verses of chapter one. But we're going to move over, because I'm almost done, to chapter two. Yeah. And we're going to look at verse 16. I'm still talking about God, and now he wants to tell you about this marvelous God. <coughs> See, if we don't preach Christ, then we ain't preaching. Amen. I, I was only called by God to preach. I was called to preach Christ, not Porter. Amen. I was called to preach Christ, not the problems of the world. We all got problems. But preach Christ, the solid rock we stand on all other things. Sink and sand. Verse 16, it says in chapter 3, verse 6, I mean chapter 2, Lord forgive me. In verse 16, if I had to say point 2, my sisters, we just finished point 1. Here's point 2. Point 2 in this verse, uh, in this Christ lives within my heart. That's our subject today. Christ living within our hearts. So let's talk about how Christ lives within our hearts. We're going to look at verse 16 of the second chapter of the book of Galatians. And it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ. Amen. Watch this. And not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Amen. So what he wants you to know today, you're not saved today because of your works. Yes. You're not saved because you usher. You're not saved because I preach. Yeah. You're not saved because we sing in the choir. We're not. See, when we come to the church, we come in here. Those things are put in place that we put God's house in order. Yeah. See, we were saved. Or should we say maybe we weren't? But if we came to church and we wasn't saved, well, you shouldn't be working in the house of God until God saved you. But some of us got saved not in the church. Amen. And so when we came in the church, we came in the church, not that we were working the church, but we came in here to fellowship Amen. one with another. Amen. We came in here to show each other love. That if one of us are down, Christ is saying, I died for the sins of the world. He didn't die that, 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 uh, uh, for some of us. He didn't die that, that, that you started getting saved and thinking that you're better than other people. Amen. He died for all sin. Amen. He died for all people. Amen. So when you are saved, that makes you joint heir to Christ. Amen. Which means, watch this, which means that if you're saved and I'm saved, then God is saying that me and you, Sister June, are connected to the vine. Amen. God is the is the vine and we're the branches. Amen. Right? Amen. So how in the world can a plant that be part of a vine and all of us are just connected to the vine, yes. right? Which means we're number branches, That's right. right? We're leaves on a tree, 
right? So if the vine, or should I say, if the branch or the vine live, mm -hmm. then how in the world do the flowers die? Well, if you're connected. Yeah. The only way a plant or a flower die that's connected to a vine because the flower or the plant is no longer connected. See, that's how you can tell what's living and what's dead. See, see, when you're living, then you're alive like this bush and you got red and yellow and black and white and all the colors are beautiful in his sight. Jesus loves. That's the little children of the world. See, not one plant is greater than the other. Right. The beauty of the plant comes because of the vine, That's not right. because of the, of the flowers. Right. The flowers only represent the vine because the vine brings life. Yes. And the life is the love, is, is the life of, 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 of the light, yes. which God shines within every man. Right. And so the only way they can live is because Christ lives. Yes. The only way we live it's because Christ lives. The only way we we exist. I'm not talking in your flesh. I'm talking in your spirit. That's right. See, 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 God chose you. You didn't choose him. He chose you. He made you part of the vine. See, before God chose you, you didn't exist. You anybody ever seen a bug pop up? Boop. You go to a tree and a little bulb there. That that bug has life. Yeah. That bug is just a little thing, and it's, it ain't even it ain't even showing the beauty, mm -hmm. brother brother Pierce. You got beauty to be shown. Amen. See, you was a little bug, and then all of a sudden, God allowed you, and He kept feeding you His Spirit, and kept feeding you His love, and kept feeding you, regardless of what any thorns or any. Uh, uh, stuff that's around you that's trying to stop you from living or stop you from having life. If God be for you, yes. who then can be against you? God is saying, because I'm the vine and I give life, no man can take it away. No man has the power to stop you from blood, from, from budding, from, from blossoming, from being with God. Want you to be. Stop letting people put out your light. They can't put your light out. You ought to tell folks, I'm a child of the most high God. You ought to let them know if God be for me, if God shine within me, if God woke me up this morning, if God see the see the devil. He wants to he wants to put a cloud of darkness yeah. over you that yeah. the, that the S O N don't shine. Uh -huh. But see, God is letting you know darkness have no comp darkness cannot uh, overtake the light. Right. See, when you are Christ's child, Amen. You got a choice to say today I'm gonna live. Or today I'm gonna die. Yeah. You got a choice to say, guess what? Today I'm gonna let my little light shine. Yeah. Not because of you, yeah. not because of me, yeah. but you ought to let your light shine because God gave me life. Yeah. And God gave me life yeah. today. Yeah. God woke me up this morning. God touch me. Yeah. Have the activities of my limbs. Yeah. See, these plants do not bloom, they do not exist because they exist. They exist because God. Amen. God gave them when God walks in the garden and he walks through the garden and he goes and he picks he picks the flower and he takes the flower he purges his garden God does that he purges the garden so if he comes to say uh, brother uh what y'all say is it? What's your husband's name? Glenn. Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn, today God picked you out of the flower and he took you out and he says, you know what? The garden that, that I created, you have lived for this many years. Yeah. I put you a root. I gave you water. I gave you everything you needed to be productive. Yeah. Now God comes whatever time he wants into his garden, he picks. Now who, which one of us that are nothing but plants got a right to say, no, Glenn, come back. You don't supposed to leave. And God is saying, 
Glenn. I chose Glenn. Yeah. And I have a purpose for Glenn. Whatever I want to do with Glenn, I do with Glenn. Why? Because God is saying, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. But what we're supposed to be saying in the garden is we're supposed to be saying, bless be the name of the Lord. Why? Because we should be sitting in the garden saying, I'm looking forward That's right. to my day. Yes. When the Lord, when I can stop feeding from the vine, when I can stop living a nurture life, when I can stop uh, going through the winter, going through the spring, when the wind of life blowing and blowing all of the bushes and you barely holding on, but all of a sudden God shows up and he take it from the, from the bush. And he taketh his plant and he take you to a place where there'll be no more wind. Yeah. There'll be no more trouble. Yeah. There'll be no more sickness. Yeah. There'll be no more disease. Yeah. There'll be no more none of that. He said, but every day where I'm taking you to gonna be a good day. Every day gonna be sunshine. Uh, 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 there'll be no more teardrops. No more goodbyes. Yes. Every day gonna be a day living with you. The most high God. Amen. I got to finish. I got to finish. I got to go to verse three. I, I should I say point three? Yes. Point three is where we travel down to the twentieth verse. Christ lives within my heart. Point three, last point. We're gonna get out the way. It says, "I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live." Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What is he saying, Pastor? He's saying that when Christ died for us and he chose us, that we too now Will, will also be connected with him yes. in the crucifixion. Amen. So Christ was crucified, mm -hmm. right? So in order for us to be born again, uh -huh. we too must die. Amen. See, we too must die, right? We have to kill our flesh that our spirit man will live. Listen to what it says. It says, I am crucified with Christ, Amen. right? So when, when, when Christ called your name and he saved you, now you are crucified with him. Means guess what? Your flesh, like his flesh, is dead. Dead to sin. I'm crucified with Christ. But watch this. But nevertheless, I live. Huh? See, there's two types of death. There is a death that Sister Verna talked about with Brother Glenn, that you're going to die, and there is no more of you. But then there's a death that comes that you only got to die one time. That's right. See, one, one time you die with Christ, then that second death, that's, that's, not, that's, a, that's a nurture death. Amen. We want to die in the spirit. Yes. Yes. We want to be, watch this, we want to be crucified <coughs> with Christ. That's right. uh, that means we want to die in the spirit, man. That means, that's what? I want my flesh to die. Somebody's going to get this in a minute. Amen. See, the flesh only going to die one time. Amen. Anybody getting this? Amen. Your flesh ain't dying twice. Right. It's dying one time. Yeah. Okay? Either your flesh going to die, that the spirit, see, that's what he said. Either you for me or you against me. Okay? He's trying to tell you that if you die in the spirit, you ain't got to worry about dying in the, in, in, in the flesh because flesh already did. You died a long time ago when you gave your your life to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? So now, all you're waiting to do is put the body to rest. Yeah. Right? You, you not even should be walking around carrying your flesh. You should be walking around glorifying your spirit man that's in Christ. Uh -huh. That's why he said, nevertheless, I live. Uh, I died. Uh -huh. my, my flesh died that my spirit might live. Amen. See, some people, flesh die and their spirit never lives, so they just dead. They dead and sick. But not us. We died in the flesh. We, we killed our flesh already. See, some of y'all are walking around not understanding that your flesh is already dead. Mm -hmm. See, some of us going to the funeral home looking at people's body going, oh, they dead. 
Yeah. But if you're saved, Come on. Save. see if you're saved, you already that that body you're going to see was already dead. Amen. Amen. See, you die in the spirit, yeah. your flesh already dead. We're supposed to be walking around being ambassadors of Christ. Amen. What makes us different than the world? We are different because we died in our flesh. We killed what? See, the flesh in the flesh dwelleth. No, yeah. no, no good things. No good things in my flesh dwelleth. Amen. Right? So that's what I can tell. I'm gonna help you today. I feel like preaching. That's what I can tell if I'm if if, if I'm slipping back into that old man. Huh? Because I start doing things that I used to do. See, but when you're born in Christ, see, you don't have a desire to do the things I used to do. The saints used to say, uh, uh that, that once I was born again, I, I don't go. Where I used to go. I, I, I don't want to do. I don't have a desire to do what I used to do. Huh? See, once I'm born again, I'm born in Christ. Huh? Yes, I got a new way of walking. I got a new way of talking. I got a new song I want to sing. Where I used to sing OJs. Now I say, what a friend we have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry all. Christ, the solid rock I stay. All other things are seeking sin. See, when you say it, you don't talk that old stuff. See, you 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 change partners. You ought to wake up in the morning with not a spirit of I don't feel like getting them there. I don't care if it's Monday and it's raining outside. You ought to say that this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. You ought to say, I shall rejoice. I shall rejoice and be glad in it and be glad. See what you say? You ought to say, This is the day that the Lord has made. What? And I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because this is the day. Stop right there. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I just wanted to say that because children of the Most High God, we wake up like that. Uh, we don't we don't go to sleep without no hope. We don't go to sleep thinking we're gonna die. No, we wake up in the morning knowing that is His. What He said, He touched me, and oh, the joy that felt my soul. Something happened. Ha, now I know He touched me, made me whole. See, that's how we put to wake up. Wake up, and then when the enemy come, we supposed to be able to talk to the enemy through the word. We ought to say, "No weapon that formed against me shall prosper." See, the devil gonna bring weapons. He gonna bring this. He gonna bring that. He gonna try to stop me. He gonna try to discourage me. But life and death is in the power of my tongue. So he live, yet shall I live. Huh. Hand up here today. So Christ died. That I may live. So why do I have no hope? Why do I weep? Why do I walk in sorrow? I'm born again. Born of the most high God. Huh? That means he, he, he purchased me with his blood. He purchased me with his love. And I'm going to walk around defeated? No. Oh Christ, the solid rock I stay. I got five minutes. I'm going to finish up. But Christ liveth in me. And life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me, who loved me, who loved me, and gave himself for me. You ought to walk out of here today if you don't get nothing else. While you are yet living in the flesh, you ought to keep telling yourself every day, he loved me, and yet he died for me. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do. He died. He died and gave himself for me. So why now should I walk around in sadness? Why should I walk around and let the enemy be speaking them negative things in my mind? No, I live today because he lives. 
I can face tomorrow. Yes. Because I know yes. that he holds my future. Yes. My life yes. is now worth living. Yes. Because he lives. Yes. My life is not worth living because I live. No. My life is worth living because he lives. Yes. See, y'all got to get it. Back to this plant. I'm about to take my seat. The flowers don't live unless the branch or the root live. If the, if the branch, if, if, if the branch stop living, everything, don't care how pretty it is, is all going to die. But the flowers rejoice and they give praises to the branch because it's the branch that lives that gives us the activity, that gives us the joy, the happiness, so we can shout. Y'all miss it. Amen. Did anybody see the branch on these flowers? Yeah. You can't hit it. But yet, it's powerful. Yeah. The branch is high. Anybody see Jesus? Uh -huh. Anybody see him? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yet, you look at me. Why? Because he lived within me. I live because he lived. Huh? I can walk around with folk lie on me. First lady asked me, why do you help folk when they keep treating you wrong? Because he lived? The reason why I can help, not because of Porter, not because I did anything great. We talked about Brother Nicholson. Somebody was like, Porter did it, Porter did it. No, I told you, don't do it. The reason why Porter or any other person can do anything is because of the vibe that I'm connected with. If I got a good heart because the vibe is good. If I got joy because the vibe got joy. If I got mercy because the vibe gives all grace and The vibe. Who is the vibe? Jesus is the vibe. He said ye are the branches and I am the vine. If you abide in me and I abide in you you can ask whatever. He is the vine. Father is the dresser. But if you abide in the vine and the vine abide in you, you can do anything. You can do anything. I'm done. Somebody bless God. Y'all bless him. Y'all bless the vine that week. Come on, y'all can do better than that. I ain't say bless the water. Say bless God. Christ lives within our hearts. Christ lives. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds our future. Life is worth living just because he lives. Y'all know Christ ain't, Christ is not going to die. He's already died. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have no reason to be sorry. Amen. We don't have no reason to be sad. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Put your faith and hope and trust yeah. in God. Yeah. And he won't let you down. Yeah. To God be the glory yeah. for the great thing yeah. that he has done. Yeah. Amen. Bless him. Come on, bless him. Bless God. Yeah.